hey, do you want to learn to take a picture like this? Or maybe like this? It all starts with understanding the basics of shutter speed and how shutter speed either makes or breaks images like these, and it starts right now. My name is Sean Seymour and I own a photography studio in Sacramento, California. Last year I did 198 shoots with over 112,000 images. Woohoo! And I can tell you that although it seems basic, shutter speed is something you have to have dialed if you want to take great photos and great video. If to date your pictures have been so-so or you're getting frustrated with hunting and pecking around the settings of your camera, no worries. In this tutorial, I'm gonna cover shutter speed and by the end of this video, you'll have the basics locked and understand the magic behind creating some of these cool looking images. And I'll explain how shutter speed works for both photography, which we've talked about, and basic videography. So stick around till the end of this video where I give you a tip about what shutter speed to use for your specific frame rate. This is referring to video. And why you can't use a faster shutter speed even though you may want to knock down the light on those bright sunny days. Actually, it took me a while to get my hands wrapped around the concept because in photography, you can cut down the light by increasing your shutter speed. Not so with video. I'll give you a simple explanation and a guideline to follow. Before you know it, you're gonna be making cinematic videos like a pro. Well, a pro-ish. Hey, before we start, I'd appreciate it if you would please punch the lights out on that like button down below in the description box. That tells YouTube that they should show this video to other people. I'm gonna ask you one more thing and that is to share this video with your friends and not just your photographer friends. Since the advent of the smartphone, we all are taking photographs and video and who doesn't wanna make those better? Is it just me or is that moving? No, it's me. I'm tripping out on this. That's weird. I never had that happen before. Let me ask you, have you ever wondered what it takes to freeze an athlete in motion or to create an image that has buttery smooth water flowing back into the ocean? Guess what? It's all about shutter speed. Basics of shutter speed boil down to two things. One, your camera's a mechanical shutter, which is like a set of curtains or blinds on your window at home. We open the curtains to allow light into a room and we close the curtains to make it dark. Your camera's shutter does the same thing. It opens to allow light to pass through and be recorded by your camera's sensor and it closes to stop the light. And if you don't already know, your camera sensor is what records light and dark or highlights and shadows and creates the images that we see on our computers or on our phones. The number two basic of shutter speed is shutter speed. Shutter speed is nothing more than the measurement of time your shutter remains open, allowing light to pass through to your sensor. The longer that your shutter is open, the more your sensor is exposed to light. Seems pretty simple, right? One is the mechanical shutter, which opens and closes. The other is the measure of time that that shutter remains open. All right, now that we have the two basics, let's talk about how shutter speed is expressed in your camera settings. This actually confuses a lot of beginning photographers. Most cameras have shutter speed settings from at least one two thousandths of a second all the way up to 30 seconds. Some higher end cameras even go so fast as one eight thousandths of a second. If we look at the dial on these old school cameras, which I like to use in this example because they're really easy to see, and it helps with understanding why we started doing this in the first place. And what I mean by doing this is, these are not whole numbers, these are fractions. The number one has been removed from the fraction. So when you see 2000 on a dial, it actually means one two thousandths of a second. Once you get it, you got it. You'll know once you start hitting full seconds of shutter speed because not only will your shutter stay open longer, but the display on your camera, if it isn't one of these older cameras, will actually have a quote mark next to the number. Let's move on to how fast shutter speeds or slow shutter speeds affect your images. Typically a fast shutter speed serves to freeze any action that's taking place. And a slow shutter speed allows things that are moving to essentially drag across the recording surface of your sensor, thereby creating motion blur. You can even use a slower shutter speed to completely remove non-stationary things from a scene. 
Think busy town square in Europe with lots of people walking around and all you want is an image of the town square with no people. One of the ways you can do this is to use a really slow shutter speed. Leave your shutter open until everyone has moved around a bit. This will essentially remove all of the non-stationary distractions from the scene. As a matter of fact, I'll probably do a whole separate tutorial on just this one subject. I won't cover how you're gonna have to run through the square like a crazy person to get everyone to move who hasn't moved and if few seconds, but that's for another day. To help illustrate what I mean by freezing action versus creating a blur, let's use these next few images of Skittles being poured into a bowl as an example. Starting out with this picture, you'll see that these Skittles are essentially frozen with a shutter speed of 1 12 50th of a second, 1,250th of a second. There's still a little bit of motion blur, but not enough to really get upset about. I need to qualify this a little bit and let you know that Skittles falling into a bowl are actually moving really fast. So 1 1,250th of a second is pretty quick to shoot things like some sports, but probably not fast enough to freeze things like falling Skittles or falling water or a swimmer swimming through the water with droplets of water splashing all around in the air. I would personally want to try and bump my shutter speed up to at least one two thousandths of a second in order to completely freeze these Skittles or water in the air or whatever. Let's look at these Skittles at one one thousandths of a second. Notice there is a little bit more motion blur, but in my opinion, you've got to be faster than that if you want your image to be super, super crisp. And this is showing you why I think that. Falling Skittles still have motion blur. This next picture is one five hundredth of a second, and you can definitely see that we are beginning to get some true blur in the falling Skittles. The Skittles that have already landed in the bowl and aren't moving that fast look frozen. So that's what most people think is going to be an acceptable speed to freeze action, but it really takes more than that if you want to freeze action completely. So depending on what you're shooting, this may be a sweet spot. Okay, 500th of a second between fast enough and having enough light for proper exposure. Now we're moving on to the image of one 1 25th of a second, and you can see that's very blurry. If I were trying to freeze action, this probably would not be an image that would be acceptable. Our last image is at one fourth of a second, and now our blur has become this sort of cool river of flowing color. We're starting to venture into being creative with our shutter speed. Kind of cool, huh? Here's a good rule of thumb for how fast your shutter speed should be if you're going to hand hold the camera. Typically you want your shutter speed to be one over the focal length of your lens and that's just the size of your lens. So if you don't know what the focal length is, more common terms is the size. So if I have a 50 millimeter lens, that's my focal length. If I have a 50 millimeter lens, I would want to shoot at 1 50th of a second. If I have a 200 millimeter lens, 200th of a second and so on. Personally, this is just a ballpark figure, ballpark area because we have in-camera stabilization, lens stabilization. So you kind of just follow this rule as a starting point, but it doesn't necessarily have to be hard and fast. I break this rule all the time and sometimes I get away with it and sometimes I don't. But it's a good place to start. Okay, here's a few more examples of how fast to slow shutter speeds work. My nephew Asa was good enough to help me out by jumping off of these sand dunes in Oregon. In this first photograph, I froze him midair with a shutter speed of 1 1600th of a second. You can see that he's basically static and there's very little motion blur even though he's falling to the ground. This is why I try to get at least 1 16th to 1 2,000th of a second anytime I'm doing outdoor sports photography or I wanna freeze something. I guess a running dog would qualify for that same category even though I don't have a dog and I don't want a dog. In this second picture, my shutter speed was 1 1250th of a second or 1,250th of a second and he still looks pretty clear but we're starting to see some motion blur in the image. At least I caught the action which is more important than having just a little bit of motion blur. In this third picture, my shutter speed is 1 15th of a second. If I was trying to freeze sports action, this would definitely not be an acceptable image. However, there is a place in photography for this style of image and for this shutter speed, which I'll explain in just a minute using another image. Okay, this last image is taken with a shutter speed of one second. 
and you can see that we've almost completely removed Asa from the image. There's just a slight blur from where he went through the frame while the shutter was open. But if I wanted to, I could completely remove him from the scene and I probably could have taken the shutter speed down to two seconds and you would not see him at all and you wouldn't see that blur. Remember earlier when I was mentioning that you can use shutter speed to remove a non-stationary item from your image? This is what I was talking about. If you're able to leave the shutter speed open long enough for the non-stationary distractions in a scene to move out of the scene, then without Photoshop or any other editing tools, you can completely remove those distractions from your image. Of course, this introduces challenges of its own, like letting in a huge amount of light into the camera. This is something I'll definitely do a deep dive on in another tutorial, probably some night photography, some light streaks, and some other stuff. If you haven't yet, click the subscribe button below in the description box. That will keep you up to date when I have other tutorials that I upload to YouTube. Kind of cool, huh? The last thing I want to touch on about shutter speed is you as the photographer can introduce camera movement which can cause your images to look blurry or soft, believe it or not. The faster your shutter speed though, the more it helps any unwanted camera movement behind the lens. Another word of caution, the higher your pixel count for your sensor or for your camera, the more sensitive your camera is going to be to camera movement. Here's what I was talking about earlier when I said there's a real place in photography for using slow shutter speeds to create motion blur in your images. And I highly recommend you try this out. It's really rewarding and very cool. In this image, I purposefully wanted to introduce camera movement by panning with this speeding motorcycle. I used a shutter speed of 1 100th of a second to help freeze my subject, but not so fast as to freeze the background too. I wanted the background blurry. The trick to this style of photography is to keep the subject framed in the same spot the whole time you're panning or moving with them. And then to use a shutter speed that will help make them clear and frozen while still allowing that motion blur in the background. It's a little tricky and it takes some practice, especially when you start throwing in things like composition, but you're gonna love the results of creating this sense of movement in your images. So give it a try. To contrast with that image, with this next image, I didn't want anything moving. So I shot it at one two thousandths of a second. Believe it or not, one two thousandths of a second might have been a little bit slow for these guys. <laughs> what I wanted to capture was the expression on the motorcyclist's face as they came through the corner. And to do that, there was no way I could have any blurriness or any movement in the image at all. I was literally shooting for the whites of their eyes. So one two thousandths of a second was like a bare minimum. And that got me there as far as shutter speed is concerned. And all I had to do was make sure that my focus was dialed really, really well. We're talking Boom, matter of inches. All right, at the beginning of this video, I promised to cover shutter speed as it relates to basic videography. The cool thing is that once you understand the mechanics of shutter speed, applying it to understanding videos is not as difficult as it was for me originally, at least not in the amateur world of video that I live in. So we just talked about how fast shutter speeds freeze things and how slow shutter speeds can allow a slight blur. Well, in the world of video, it's the same thing. The difference the difference is that we actually want to have a slight blur in each frame to give it a more cinematic look. To do that, you're going to set your frame rate first and then set your shutter speed to match. Also, you're typically not going to adjust your shutter speed for various lighting conditions like we might do in photography. Here's the general rule of thumb for shutter speed and video. If you have a specific frame rate, let's say that you're shooting video at 30 frames per second, then your shutter speed is going to be double that of your frame rate. So in this example of shooting 30 frames per second, my shutter speed is going to be locked in at 1 60th of a second. If my frame rate is 60 frames per second, then my shutter speed is going to be 1 120th of a second. Basically the closest that your camera will match. Like mine is 1 125th of a second. So why do we do this? Well, although it's not likely the correct technical answer, here's how I simplify it in my own head. Video is nothing more than single pictures being shown one after another at a certain number of pictures per second, or what we call frame rate. When you're watching TV, it's like watching individual pictures that are shown to you at 30 frames every second, or 30 pictures every second. Remember how fast shutter speeds freeze things in motion and slower shutter speeds allow some blur. Well, in video, we actually want a slight blur to each of those single frames so that it doesn't look digitalized, but instead looks more cinematic 
with a nice smoothness. And we do that by frame to frame, there's a little bit of blur. If we use a fast shutter speed, what happens is every single image in that video is crisp, 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 from frame to frame to frame without any slight blur to help it blend into the next frame. That causes this weird digital effect which your eye actually picks up on. See how this video of these falling Skittles has that weird digital effect? Now look at them when we reduce the shutter down to twice that of the frame rate. So in this situation, I'm shooting 1 50th of a shutter speed for a 24 frames per second frame rate. And you'll notice because there's a slight blur to each frame that it's much smoother, much more cinematic. So while we might want to use a faster shutter speed to offset a really bright day, we can't do it when we're shooting video. With video, your shutter speed has to be set at twice that of your frame rate and we knock down the sun's brightness in other ways like maybe using a neutral density filter or moving into the shade. I hope you found this video helpful and if you liked it, please subscribe to my channel. Also click the like button below, that tells YouTube to show this video to other people. And if you want a notification when a new tutorial comes out, you can also click the bell notification and that will come directly from YouTube to you. Any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section down below. And. Until we see each other on the next video, keep it simple, my friend.